What is going on guys? <laughs> yes, you did read the title of this video correctly. We are indeed making a curry on the allotment plot in the shed, specifically because it is so, well, the, the elements are against us. It's windy, it's so hard to vlog. Um, you know, guys, I've been working all day since 6 a.m. and it is now 10 to two. So yeah, we need to take a break basically. So yeah, ingredients for this, are very simple, uh, mostly things we can grow on the allotment plot. We've got an onion, medium sized onion, and we've got a pepper that I just started cutting and thought I'd do the onion first. Uh, we've got our rapeseed uh, spray oil just to give the chicken a bit of, um, a bit of something to, to char up against. Again though, I don't think I've got salt and pepper. I'm hoping it in the in the sachet, in the seasoning, that there'll be salt and pepper already in it. We've got some diced chicken. Listen to that. <laughs> I'm just hoping I've got enough gas. This is my only, uh, well, it's my last cylinder. Pop that on the plate. Yeah, it's very basic guys. We've got some chicken, we've got an onion, we've got a pepper, we've got some curry powder, we've got a jar of, um, oh yeah, we've got a, a tin even of plum tomatoes. Uh, I don't like using chopped. If I do buy a tomato in a tin, it has to be a plum. You know, the chopped tomatoes that you can buy in the tin tend to be a lot of the old, you know, mis not even misshapen, but the, the crap ones. So go for plum if you're gonna buy a tin tomato. And uh, the flavor is so much nicer. But we need to get the onion in with the chicken so it all kind of cooks together. Uh, and then the pepper. And it's just a way of basically using up a bit of kale, which is also going to be going in here. Uh, and it's a way of you know keeping warm and getting in some calories, guys. You know, it ain't all about work. I don't know how much onion I've quite fancy in there, so. I'll grow for half, I think. And then a lovely red pepper. Won't be long until I start to put my pepper seeds in, guys. In here, actually. Um, somewhere to come to sort of start them off. And then, uh, I don't know, we might look at making a cold frame on the allotment plot, just so that there's somewhere, so I ain't got necessarily, you know, bring them all home. Remove the, the white bit out of your pepper pot, it's a little bit bitter. No, this isn't necessarily a how to cook a curry. It's just, we're cooking a curry and I'm bringing you guys along. So we've got a whole sliced red pepper going in there as well, guys. It's gonna be absolutely mint. Already the flavors are smelling so good. Oh, look at the colors. So we just wanna cook the chicken through and then we'll add in our ingredients. Now I have just remembered that I don't have a tin opener to open up the, the plum tomatoes, but I do have a little trick, quite, quite a, I think you call it a life hack. I've got a life hack for you guys, how to open a tin without a tin opener. All you need is a slab or some paper or something, but yeah, I'll cook this chicken off and then, um, and then we'll go out and we'll open the tin. Oh, this is smelling so good. Just to make my life easier, I just bought an all-in-one spice pack. So basically, I don't need to bring everything with me, you know, in little uh, spice bottles, you know. I can just add one thing. And we've got it all down. I mean, when we've got our, our main shed and our kitchen, we'll, have, we'll probably do a pallet, you know, spice rack and have everything there so that we can cook no problem if we want to. Uh, but no, for now, oh, I missed out this bit. You know, for now, we just want to warm up and have some really nice food on the allotment plot. I've never made a curry in the shed before, so I thought it's a little bit different. And I love a good curry. I've also got a uh, beer in the van as well. So pallet shed is coming together. It is more than usable at the moment, although there's still more I do want to add in here. But, uh, you know, we'll get there. You know, every time I can come and do a bit more, I'll come and do a bit more. Uh, I was supposed to be meeting a guy today about uh, getting some some materials, some recycled wooden things, but I haven't heard from him yet. I mean, there's still time. 
Uh, I still got up until five o'clock, so you know, fingers crossed, he actually uh, does come through. That would be awesome. It means we'll be able to get some more, um, some more wood to be able to make more projects um, and just you know improve the allotment of where we can. So you see my hair, guys. Nothing's improving that. Look how bad it is. <laughs> oh God. I got an email from one of my subscribers telling me that they preferred me with short hair. <laughs> I'm just gonna grow it out and, um, and see where it goes, you know. I can always, you know, touch it up if I need to. I think we're gonna add some of this now because it's about this time when I'll start adding in my own spices to coat the chicken. Um, oh, that smells really good. Go for about a quarter in there. Look at that, guys. Oh, hoo, hoo. I haven't got a wooden spoon, so the only way I can think of stirring it without using a, a metal spoon, you know, scratching it, and then you get that metallic taste in your mouth. That's what we'll have to do. We'll have to make a spoon. We'll do a pallet spoon project. <laughs> Oh, that's smelling so good. Right, guys, while that's doing this thing, we're gonna quickly shoot outside and I'm gonna show you how to open a tin without a tin opener. Don't set the shed on fire. You guys never thought I was actually gonna leave that, did ya? The amount of work we've done in here, I can't afford for this shed to burn down, guys. No, all you need is a slab, preferably a bit of a cleaner one with a little bit of texture on the top. And the way a tin is sealed is it's kind of clamped over the top. So all you need to do is just break, not even a millimetre, not even a quarter of a millimetre, just break the seal and the lid comes off. Literally all you do is, watch your pan, is you just kind of go round like this. Let me try the other side, there's too much texture on there. That's better. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of work. But I've done this, you know, when fishing up against a rock because I really wanted to get access to my, I don't know, baked beans or something. So, <laughs> so one side of my slab is too textured and the other side is too smooth. So if you, if you can find a middle, you can do this in about 15 to 20 seconds. Oh, I can see juice. And we just want to get something behind it. And whoo, make a mess and prize it open. <laughs> Absolute winner, guys. Obviously, you do make a little bit of a mess, but cooking and making a mess go hand in hand with me, guys. So I think we'll check one of the larger bits of chicken to, uh, to make sure that's done. Oh guys, look at that, look at focuses. <laughs> Could do with a couple more minutes, but it is gonna cook in the sauce, which is gonna be beautiful. Right, what I think we'll do is we'll add a splash of water. And then we'll add our tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. That's solid, we're, we're just gonna do the whole thing in one pan. Why not? Let's grab that spoon. And we are going to add kale into this dish, guys, um, which we're going to do once this has started to, basically when it's on a simmer. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll come and we'll add that. But plum tomatoes are the way to go, guys. The flavor is, uh, is incredible compared to chopped, which isn't, they aren't always the best quality, whereas plum, they, they kind of can't hide the fact they're bad quality because you're eating and you're purchasing the entire thing, so. Yeah, we just need to bring this up to temperature. I will add the rest of those spices now as well. Oh guys, look at that. Can you see that? Look at the colors. 
Oh yeah. So I'll give that a stir. I think we'll add another splash of water because I want this to boil without burning the tomatoes. Kelly said to me on the phone last night, she said, um, Oh, what did you have for dinner then? Because she's still meat free. She's fully meat free at the moment. She's doing really well. Um, and I said I had that, that manwich of a bacon sandwich, you know the... <laughs> and I sent her a picture and because she's not eating meat, she was like, what? There's no way you ate that whole thing. And guys, genuinely I did. I'll probably eat the majority of this as well. <laughs> I cannot wait until we've got the kitchen guys. I know I'm always doing things, I'm always darting around and like that. One of my subscribers said they couldn't keep up with me. And, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's just how it is. Um, but no, I can't wait until I've finished doing the jobs that I've currently started. Uh, and then we can actually start to develop a kitchen and we can grow food specifically to take to the kitchen and make you know meals with. Because this year I wanna primarily grow only what we're gonna eat. You know, I'll still experiment with one or two different things because it's always fun. But primarily, you know, grow what you like, grow what you enjoy eating, and uh, you grow quite a bit of it. <laughs> I mean, I've still got tomatoes in the freezer from last year. Like, you know, quite a few people have, I can imagine. It was a really good year for tomatoes in general. Um, but I didn't plan on doing this. This is not all my vlogs are obviously planned. Sometimes they're just, Let's have a curry in the shed and bring you guys along and make a video. <laughs> Winter, for me, doesn't mean that the, the gardening has to stop or just go into the gardens need to stop. If anything, it's an excuse to, <laughs> to make a curry. <laughs> One thing I do just need to go and get out of the van is I've got something to accompany this dish, which in Britain they kind of go hand in hand so guys watch that pan for me to make sure it don't overboil. We'll be back in a sec. This is what we've got guys. We've got I haven't got any IPA unfortunately. I've got a Stella. It will do so that's gonna go lovely with this curry once it's done. And I've also got a pan a camping pan for our basmati rice can do in a pan you just add a bit of water bring it up to temperature and then once it's piping hot like that it's ready just hope i've got enough gas to finish this entire cook i won't be greedy i'll go for i'll go for oh there's not that much in there we'll have it all <laughs> then we'll have a splash of water in there help bring it all up to temperature. This is smelling so good. I like to think there's a few of you out there doing this sort of thing. You've got to enjoy, you know, every moment that you can grab in life. You really have. You've got to enjoy the small things. You know, a lot of people take this sort of thing for granted. You know, having a, having a curry, but you know, by taking it to the garden or to the shed or even to the allotment plot, you can turn it into something that you can cherish. I know that sounds really, cliche <laughs> but to be honest once this is cooked providing it don't slip off and end up all over the floor uh, it's going to be really nice to just sit and just watch the rain eat my curry enjoy my beer and just watch the sunset which is what i'm planning to do with the rest of the day do you know what why not <sighs> ice cold Ice cold, it's been outside all day, so it goes to show how bad the weather is, guys. My van was reading four when I left this morning. And I know there's some people all over the world that get, you know, ridiculously low temperatures and probably laugh at four. But four degrees when you're moving wet pallet wear around without gloves and things, it just oh, it's horrible. But yeah, I do know some people probably find that really funny because it's it's only four degrees centigrade, it's not like minus forty. But uh, guys, honestly, it feels it sometimes. It really does. <laughs> this morning I got here, I, I literally had the, the heating on in the van. I had a, co I had a coffee on the way, so I, I was already roasty toasty. Um, 
went to open my van door and the wind took it, like proper, like ripped the door back. And then instantly freezing cold face, freezing cold hands. And I just thought, oh God, can I be bothered? <laughs> and about half an hour into restacking all my pallet wood, which was all soaking wet and tidying up, you know, here, there and everywhere, making more pallet projects for videos and things, you know, not, not within half an hour, but you know, after half a day, I was kind of really glad that I started. So we're still here. You just, like I say, you just got to get past the first hurdle and make sure you wrap up warm and just don't overdo it really. I know I do a lot on the channel, um, but that's just, that's just me. Some people might just want to take their time with it. And guys, I need to stop talking and just for one minute, just appreciate what we're actually creating here. The herbs and the spices in there. I mean, if you like curry, you can imagine what this shed smells like. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Right, I'm gonna pop that, pop that on the pallet bench. And we're gonna get this rice on. I'm just gonna quickly head over to one of my sit-on beds and grab some kale. Make sure that rice don't burn for me, guys. We'll be back in two seconds. Nice. Get this, guys. Fresh, organic, straight from the garden. Just gonna give it a little bit of a rinse, just in case there's any bugs in there. Just chuck some water over it. Yeah. guys beautiful and that's gonna go straight in our curry just like that rice is all right look at this guys oh ho, ho, look at that beautiful beautiful so I'm just gonna continue cooking this after the rice is uh, done just for three or four minutes just to let the kale sort of break down start to wilt then I know it's gonna be absolutely delicious. The colors, guys, look at that. Oh, I've got one more thing to go with this dish, believe it or not. <laughs> the other thing I got was because I couldn't get any poppadoms, I got these things, natural chips. Mmm, they look all right, didn't they? at about five minutes and I can see it's piping hot let's have a little taste of this sauce mmm oh my god my taste buds have just exploded first thing I've eaten since yesterday oh my god that's well nice Oh, it's still really hot, even though I ain't been on the heat. Mm. Oh, guys, I'm looking forward to this. Guys, I'm going to plate up and um, I'm presenting this dish. Woo! That was a wind, that was so bad out there. So, yeah, I'm going to plate this all up now and I'll show you what we're eating in about five minutes. some of that kale as well sorry it's getting a bit dark guys it is about 40 minutes until the Sun fully sets so short days in winter that's for sure Try to find them bits of kale <laughs> and then we'll go for some more sauce I think Top on there. And not forgetting a few of our mini poppadomi nachos. Beautiful. So guys, this is what we've created. Oh my god, I wish you could smell it. 
absolutely delicious. I've got a fork, but I think we're gonna not use that and we're just gonna use our use our um, nachos. Cheers guys. Happy allotment here in. Hmm. Kelly, if you're watching, I'm really sorry. I know this uh, This used to be one of your, your favorite dishes was a, a homemade curry. Mm. We're gonna ditch the fork, sod it. We don't need the fork. We cooked it with our hands, we'll eat it with our hands. Guys, I'm sure you don't want to just sit there watching me eat. So I'll end the video there and say thank you very much for keeping me company once again. I'm sorry if this has made you rather hungry. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to actually get fully stuck into this. So um, yeah, it's still raining outside. I've got a beautiful view. Um, yeah, happy gardening, guys. Happy winter. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Cheers.